Thanks for tuning in guys to the Pest and Lawn Jigit. And this is a what's wrong with my lawn <laughs> follow up. If you guys want to see the original episode where I came out to James's lawn and diagnosed his lawn and gave him the solution, click the card up above so you can kind of get a recap of what's going on. All right, so on our last episode of What's Wrong With My Lawn, we figured out uh, your sprinklers kind of hosed, uh, which we'll get into in just a little bit, but you had a massive thatch problem. So mm -hmm. for your goals, we have to strip that right off the top before we kind of move forward. But let's, uh, how'd it go? Oh, it was like eight, full pack down <laughs> trash cans full of sand. Let's go take a look at this. I uh, spread it relatively so, even along this. So what do we guess? You have about 7,000 square feet of grass yeah. here, right? I went over it probably eight or nine times. With the, with over the course trip. of the four days that we yeah. talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're saying that a trash bin, which... Yeah, and I packed it down before dumping it. Oh, I probably okay. had about eight of those. So let's take a look bins. here. So this is pretty wild. So luckily, this is James's property. So this is where he's kind of, kind of putting stuff and has the ability to put stuff. Um, but look at this. This is crazy. All of this just suffocating the grass. <laughs> Dude, this is so much. Ridiculous. You have eight of these piles. Yeah. Jeez. Ultimately we figured out that he had a sprinkler problem. I knew the sprinkler problem was bad. I just didn't know how bad the original installation was. But we found that in the southwest corner, he had like seven heads. And then on the rest of the three quarters, he had sporadic heads, just kind of in a grid pattern on how you'd normally see it. But a bunch of the heads were different. We couldn't get enough pressure to the lines. It didn't matter how many different equations we had set in place, it wasn't going to fix and repair the problem other than doing a complete redo, which he was a little frustrated about because he had just contracted this out. So needless to say, he asked me what my opinion was. I let him know that we have a couple of things to think about. Number one, water conservation in the state of Utah is a really big deal right now. So if we're going to have a sports area where we're gonna consistently have people out here, we don't wanna be pushing water all over his sports court, which he just refinished. And we also don't wanna be pushing water all over the driveway. We settled on some sprinkler heads from a company called Irigreen. Now these heads are pretty special because they are a non-intelligent AI driven system. I know that sounds kind of weird, but basically it's like being on top of a mapping software and you put a bunch of dots and tell the water where you want it to spray. Then it sprays out like a giant rainbow and puts the water exactly where we wanted it. The nice thing about the irrigation is the setup is super simple, but ultimately you have to throw out everything you thought you knew about sprinklers because this system just runs different. It's a dedicated line, it's a one inch pipe that comes in. Then what we do is we run dedicated lines home runs to each one of the heads. Now, in this style that we have here, we only have four heads. Each head is capable of doing about 2,000 square feet. Each one of these heads pushes about 25 feet from the corners. This setup is so simple considering that we don't have to worry about a valve box and everything is a dedicated line. This saved us about, I don't know, a thousand feet of pipe. I think the total amount of pipe that we used was 150 linear feet when we were all said and done. The sad news is, is he had to cap every single one of the heads on the other line. Now, here's, here's the thing. You can see in the background, all we did over the last week is literally water. We have done nothing else other than focus on daily watering of about a half inch of water per day over the last seven days. So we pushed in about three inches of water my job now is to come out and figure out, number one, do we have any recovery solution issues that we need to deal with? Number two, do we need to apply some sort of a, a fertilizer to force new growth? And three, I wanna verify how much water we actually need. So I'd say about 85% of the area, it's awesome. We've got a few adjustments that we need to make on the northwest corner and also this uh, southwest corner as well. Uh, oddly enough, the southwest corner has too much water in it. 
the soil probe sinks down about three feet. <laughs> and obviously, we don't want to be wasting water. So you can see the, uh, we were going all the way down to about right here, which is about two and a half feet. Um, the actual soil probe, or the soil plug that we pulled out, is only about uh, 12 inches, but uh, it's wet. Definitely, definitely wet, and it's sopping wet at the bottom. So on this side, you can see on the upper layers, we actually have some water, but then it just completely stops. But the funniest part about it is, most of this is actually just complete thatch. Uh, not a bad thing, this is our humus layer, it's creating dirt, doing what it's supposed to do. Pretty happy uh, with this plug. Other than the fact that uh, we don't have enough water. So this could be due to a couple of things, number one, his old sprinkler line might be flushing in some water, which we've definitely got to make sure that he's got that, that valve turned completely off now. Um, number two on that north side, I'm just not sure if it's been mapped out properly because of the amount of water that we get along the edge. Now, keep in mind with this sort of system, we're literally just connecting dots and pushing dots a little bit further out. Um, and that's it. That's the beauty about this sort of a system is that he's not going to be calling me five times a week going, man, I can't figure this out and me telling him, well, get the cups out. So this way we don't have to worry about that. But here's what our soil samples look like. Now he brought in a ton of topsoil. It was uh, topsoil mixed with a ton of clay. Uh, I thought it was going to be pretty clean topsoil, but uh, I was wrong. It's definitely not. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. The thing that out there, a lot of you guys have this stigma that clay is bad. Well, number one, it'll hold the most amount of nutrients in any of the soil categories. Number two, it'll hold the most amount of water in any of the soil categories. Now we do want a certain amount of breathing, which our end goal, if you guys haven't watched the What's Wrong With My Lawn special, is our end goal is he wants us into a turf sports court. So that's what we are doing. Not artificial turf, but real grass turf sports court. So he's gonna play a lot of different games on this lawn. So ultimately we're going to be sand leveling it to allow more oxygen transfer coming in here. But as of right now, a little bit, little bit surprised. All right, so here's the thing. The, uh, the soil probe is kind of showing some funky things, right? So we've got this quadrant from here, kind of scaling over here. It's, it's like dry, mm. like we don't have enough water. But then over by that head on the south uh, east corner, we also don't have enough water. Okay. But the thing that's kind of tripped me out is that whole area on the southwest side is way over water. Okay. Um, I think it's because we slope the lawn to drain out that way. We put a French drain uh, by the pickleball. Oh, you've court. got a Frenchie. Yeah. All right. So. My guess would be the water just slowly migrates to that corner. All right, cool. Well, I guess the wonderful thing about the system that we chose is ultimately they're building in the AI. Yeah. They don't have it yet. Mm -hmm. And I don't know when it's going to be, but we'll actually at one point be able to pick lines and choose how many inches of water in areas. Mm -hmm. So in the future, we're going to be able to deal with that. Okay. But traditional system, we just be host. Yeah. So that's actually kind of cool. Okay. Um, but as of right now, since it's like 80% of that entire quadrant, I think we'll be fine just dialing it back like you were suggesting. Okay. So, but it'd be nice if we turn on the system now, figure out these areas right here, and uh, we might just have to remap a few things. Now, if you've absolutely completely had it with your sprinkler system like James did, the Zero Green solution is fantastic. Number one, you control where you put the water, but you don't actually have to do any of the tedious tasks of going out and maintaining gears and sprinklers. You don't have to clean it. It actually has a cleaning mechanism where it pumps more water through the line, kind of shoot the debris through the heads. And if you're a person that hates calibrating things, getting water cup tests out, and spending four hours on a Saturday about every two to three months, this is a fantastic solution. So I'm not saying don't investigate lawn problems. Let me make that very clear, but this is going to minimize things and it is a smart controlled solution to not only watering properly, but saving on your water bill.
seven days later, here we are. In the meantime, guys, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, hit me up down in the comments down below. I'm gonna post a link to the Irrigreen system if it's something that you're interested in looking in. The Pest and Lawn Ginger, we're slaying lawns. Stay tuned, next time we're going to go over how to determine the perfect fertilizer and how to properly do a soil test.